That day, the day in the life of Millie Jack John, felt like a dream, and there was no place for it in the store of my mind. When the ground opened up before us, we thought he was a ghost. He'd been looking for treasure, but he didn't know he'd been looking for 200 years. All his folk were dead, so he went back, looking for the past again. The only thing he left behind was a candle. I didn't know how David felt. For a week there had been a silence between us. I hadn't felt able to get him out of it. With David, he just had to wait. But now it was Saturday afternoon again. The time was ripe. The silence was over. Still alright, is it? Yep. But flames need oxygen. Don't they? Not this one, apparently. See, the tins are tight. So, in theory, once it's used up all the oxygen, it should go out. But it hasn't. And it's still the same length. Weird. What's that you got? Well, it measures the temperature of the tin. And this one measures the air. Uh... And? And the tin's colder. The flame, it gives off cold. How long's it been in there? Most of the week. Maybe it's radioactive. Dangerous. Yeah. How do you test for that? A Geiger counter. A really easy thing to lay hands on on a Saturday afternoon. Have you tried film? Well, doesn't radioactivity do something to film? Good thinking. We'll get two films. We'll wrap one in paper and one in lead. We'll expose them to the candle. Develop them and see if there's any difference. Oh, yes. Oh, dear. I think you must have had a fault on your camera. There's nothing on these at all. What? Neither of them? Afraid not. There's no shadows? Nothing at all? Completely unexposed. Sorry. There's no charge. Hope it wasn't anything important. No, it's all right. Really. Thanks a lot. I put yours in first, and then mine, and there's some uh, blank pages in case you remember anything else. Now what? I don't know. Well, I thought you'd have a theory. You're the bright one. I mean, this crazy thing happens, and, well, we've done the scientific thing and written it up. But we can't just leave it. Forget it. No. Maybe there's something else. Something... Something connected. That we'll see because we're looking for it. What sort of something else? Stones. There's something else might have happened that's a bit odd. And connects? Well, maybe. I mean, the newspaper definitely said they'd been moved. They must be joking. They're two feet high. The council think it's vandals. <laughs> well, like Superman. <laughs> well, there is one down at Swamp Farm. Down there. Frank Watson's place. He's some sort of cousin on my mum's. He told me once. His grandfather took him for a gatepost. Died soon after. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I wonder which came first. The path or the stones? The path came to the stones, I reckon. They were brought here, weren't they? They didn't walk. Maybe they did. Come on, arrest ya. First one to touch gets away!
Careful, might come true. <laughs> right, let's have a look. I found this. It must have been taken years ago. It might give an idea if I can work out where it was taken from. What? These... these patches! Are they all like this? Yeah. It does look as if they've moved. So they did walk here? No! Some joke has done it on purpose. Yay! Look, you can see why it's pushed the ground up. You could almost say it were proved. I don't want it proved. It's not vandals, though. No. It's more earthquake-ish. Earthfast. What? Yeah, fast. The sort of big stones that rise up in the ground. Frank Watson told me. They found a lot this year. Down at Swang. When they were ploughing. <gasps> so... So maybe the earth's been shifting all over. Not just what we saw. I thought we saw. Oh, except when Nelly Jack John came out, that was the ground moving. This really looks like... like it's the stones moving. Along the hill. There's a line round up too. And cracks. It's frost. Like a man. Twelve feet tall and up to his knees in the ground. You can't see anything in stones. 